everybody, this is Erica the Technology Nerd who likes to film stuff and I am continuing on with the Galaxy Note 3 review. Actually, tomorrow I'm going to take this guy out and test out the camera. And soon after that, I will be filming the full review. Samsung was kind enough to send me a couple of goodies today. We have the Galaxy Gear here. They also sent me the Galaxy Note 10.1 2014 edition. This is the Wi-Fi only and has the Exynos processor inside of it. My interest was more in the Snapdragon version because it has a phone inside of it. And these days, phones are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, so my interest now is having a tablet and a phone all in one and actually being acceptable. So even though I don't have the Snapdragon phone version, I want to use this almost as if I was using it as a phone by tethering it to one of my other phones. And hopefully that can help some people decide whether they want to get the actual tablet version or the Galaxy Note 3. I get a lot of questions about which one should I get, the tablet or the phone. Well, luckily I have both of them in hand right now. So in another upcoming video, I will be talking about that experience. My primary interest today is looking at the Galaxy Gear kind of just as an overview. I want to do a full review on this guy when I have a chance to fully check out the camera and the battery life on this one. But as far as cameras and battery life goes, it's got a 1.9 megapixel autofocus camera. It's also got a 315 milliamp hour battery, which is very small. For typical usage, Samsung is claiming 25 hours, so it's about a day. This is something that you're going to need to charge every day. But I'm curious to see what kind of limits I can push it to because there are some other crafty things I have figured out how to do with this device, which I will discuss in just a second. It's got a 320 by 320 pixel display, 1.63 inches. We've got connectivity here, which is Bluetooth 4.0. And the camera records an HD 720p. The most interesting thing about this guy is that this is not just an accessory. This is not just a watch like one of the ones that Sony released where you must have it connected to the phone in order for it to be able to do anything anything. Actually, this guy is a full functioning Android device. It's actually got a CPU inside of it that's clocked at 800 megahertz. It's got four gigabytes of internal storage and also a half of a gigabyte of RAM. So even when this guy is not tethered to my Galaxy Note 3, which is the only phone right now that this is compatible with, Samsung should be expanding that compatibility. If it's only Galaxy devices, that's hard to say. This guy still has some functionality that extends beyond the phone. So let's go ahead and open it up. I want to show you some things. I like this box. It's cutely presented like one of their phones. Shows that they take this seriously. On the side here, you can see that there's this stripe. It says it's yellow. This is how you know what color your device is. They sent me a nice sunny yellow happy version. So here we have the little guy here. I've already unboxed this and installed some things onto it. As far as what you get in the box, you get this little accessory that wraps around the phone so that you can charge the phone. And they also give you a 0.55 amp charger. This is just a charger. They're not giving you a USB cable, which makes me a little bit sad because this has more functionality than they want you to know. So just for kicks, let's go ahead and show you how this little jobber works. So you've got some pogo pins underneath here for charging. When you want to charge your little friend that needs to be charged every 24 hours, you just set it in like this, close it with the clasp, and then you can see you can plug your micro USB into it and it charges. To get it off, you only need to press on this, it snaps open, and there you go. So of course you want to hold on to this and not lose it. It's got two functionalities. It's for charging and also it has NFC inside of it where you pair it to your phone. This is how you're going to get the actual program onto your Galaxy Note 3 so that you can start loading apps onto this. My initial impression was that it's slightly bulky. We've got a power button here. We've got a microphone right here. This side, you've got another microphone. Of course, you've got your Pogo ports for charging. You've got speakers right here. Let's go ahead and unclasp this. The slippery fingers, sometimes it's not the easiest. There we go. Now they have microphones on both sides for a good reason. Some people like to have their watch on their left arm, while other people like to have the watch on their right arm. And they're just making sure that you're not obstructing the microphones. So once this guy is unclasped, you just want to pull it outward and you can adjust to various sizes. There's a bunch of little tape everywhere. So there is a pin, which you can see released right there, and you can slide it to your desired size. For me, I've got itty bitty little wrists, and the third pin does just fine. So being right-handed, I'd like to have this guy on my left wrist, and I'm just going to turn it this way. So you just slip it onward, fold it downward, and clasp in place. 
The watch feels very snug on my wrist depending on how I have it set. People who have bigger wrists are sometimes complaining that it feels very snug or tight. The impression is that it is quite snug feeling, so sometimes I like to adjust it a little bit looser because it feels as if I'm losing the range of motion in my wrists. It also feels like my arm can get a bit sweaty underneath it. So depending on how I'm feeling, I kind of just adjust it. Right now I feel like having it nice and fitted, but otherwise it's nice to have it a little bit loose. It gives me more of a range of motion. But if you have very, very large wrists, it might be a little bit too snug for you as some people are complaining. Although check this out, they do give you quite a bit of room. This is on the very last notch. Let's go ahead and hypothetically see what that looks like. Yeah, I can see some guys having some pretty beefy arms. It kind of just rolls around like a bracelet now on me. But I can see what people are complaining about if they've got very, very big arms. As for main navigation features around this watch, of course, the first thing you're going to want to do is to use it to tell time. So there's an accelerometer in this watch. If you go under settings, under the gear manager, you can see that there is wake up gesture when that is on. Just say you have your arm pointed downward and you want to know what time it is. The screen is currently off, but as soon as I point it towards my face, the screen is going to turn on and I can easily see what time it is. And then I can put my wrist back downward. The only thing is if you're flipping your wrist around a lot, it's easy to turn the screen on. I worry about battery life that way. I also worry about burn-in. So some people might elect to just turn that off and simply touch the power button when they feel like seeing what time it is. Also from this main home screen, you have a couple different things that you can do that go along with the main navigation features. If you swipe downward, you're going to be brought into the camera. You have two different settings here. This is a toggle that lets you choose either the video camera or just to take pictures. And then you've also got a menu. You can choose your focus mode, photo size, sound and shot, and signature. So for photo size, you can see that you can have a one-to-one -one ratio, which would just be a little square. Something like Instagram would appreciate this. Or you can take pictures 1280 by 960, four-thirds aspect. You've also got a focus mode. You can see that you've got autofocus, or if you want fixed focus, that's going to work for macro, such as taking pictures of things up close, like documents, that would probably work well for that. In order to navigate backward to get back to your main home screen, you can either swipe downward like that, or you can hit the power button, which is going to bring you right back to your main screen. This acts like the home button or the back button on an Android phone, basically same function. And then if you hit the power button again, once you are on the home screen, it's going to turn the watch off. If you scroll upward from the bottom, it brings you into a dialer. You've kind of just been punching numbers in there. What I really love about this watch is that I can use it as a phone. It's going to be a Bluetooth phone accessory for my Note 3, but I can access the dialer right from here, make a phone call, or even answer a phone call. And you've got a microphone here or here, depending on which wrist you have it on. And you've got the speaker here, so if you lift your wrist up to your mouth, you can easily speak and have a phone call conversation. Although your phone call is going to be on speaker, so if you are wanting to speak in private, this might not be the best option. You might just want to revert the call to the phone and pick it up from there. Call quality seems to be so-so, kind of grainy sounding, although I am in a low reception area. So when I take it out tomorrow, I'm going to go to the pumpkin patch, take some pictures, pretty much with every device I've got at this moment that I'm testing and I'll have a chance to see how it does out and about. And if you don't know the number, you can easily scroll downward to get back to your main screen. And for me, if I swipe to the left, I've got my contacts right here. I can press on contacts and look anyone up, and it picks it right from my contacts inside of my Note 3. So scrolling through here, I've got several different categories that you can choose the priority and the order on the phone. You organize this on the phone, and it's going to show up simply on here. When you go underneath your gear manager, which you first installed by tapping this little dock to the back of your phone, there are a lot of things that you can see underneath here. The one thing that I was pointing out a moment ago was my apps. If you go underneath my apps, you're presented with favorites, installed apps, and featured. Now, if you want to arrange your categories, you need to go underneath here, and you can see that you've got several different ones. You simply just need to drag and drop depending on where you want them to be arranged, and it's immediately updated on your watch. Now underneath installed apps, you can see all the apps that are currently installed, which includes the categories I was showing you, and also things that you can install that are meant for the Galaxy Gear. You can find those underneath featured, 
You have things like Evernote for Galaxy Gear, you've got My Fitness Pal, a couple of other things. In order to find compatible apps, you need to go underneath the Samsung App Store, and you've got a couple different categories. There really isn't much under here right now. You've got some utility apps, there's really nothing that I'm very interested in. You've got a couple of other clock faces that you can choose. You've got an entertainment section, which includes very simple games like Spin the Bottle and Dice. But that seems a little bit insulting. I hope Samsung continues to make applications available or let developers make applications available so that we can add more things onto this guy. But if you're not in the mood for waiting, there are other things that you can do. And that's one thing that I really like about this guy is I was telling you earlier that this is a fully functioning kind of an Android device. If I go underneath my installed apps, you can see under here that I have Candy Crush Saga. Yeah, I was actually able to install normal Android apps onto this guy. Now basically in order to install Android applications onto this guy you're going to need to sideload apps onto this. To do that you need to install the watch into the dock that they gave you and plug this guy into your computer. Now I would assume you probably have the proper cord because it came with your Galaxy Note 3 anyway. You need to go underneath settings and underneath gear info. You're going to see USB debug. Make sure that's checked. I will put a link in the description for a guide about how to sideload applications. I was able to do this via my MacBook terminal, or you can use the command prompt on your Windows computer. It's very, very simple to sideload apps. It's very quick as well. You just need to go online, look for the APK of whatever it is that you want. In this case, I found the APK for Candy Crush Saga, and then I just used terminal to push it to the gear. So going back underneath applications, I want to show you how this looks. It does take a couple of seconds to load. And there you have it, it's quite loud, so I'm just going to cover up the speaker there. We're gonna say play on, play. And you can see this is ridiculously small, but the nice thing about this is that it's actually very sensitive and I don't have much trouble at all playing. So it is indeed playable. It sounds pretty decent as well. There are some volume controls on this guy, although they're not easily or readily accessible. You need to go underneath the settings and control the volume. But of course, I can just say bye-bye. And there you go. Now it's just the sound effects. Sweet. Yeah, pretty sweet. Yes, yeah, so this is able to actually do other things beside the norm of what they want you to do with this. The first question after that is, what else can you do with this? Can you use Skype? Can you use web browsers? At this current moment, no, you can't. So where it says Skype name, Skype password, I'm not able to get any keyboards to punch up. I hope that developers are able to do something about that. And also there are no radios inside of here except for Bluetooth. So unless somebody is able to figure out how to get Bluetooth tethering to work to where you could tether it to your phone and then get internet that way and be browsing on here, there really isn't a way to Skype or to use the web browser. And as I mentioned, I wasn't able to get a keyboard working either, but I am really hoping that this is a work in progress. That would be so so awesome. Also, if you don't like this skinned interface that's on here right now, you can sideload Nova Launcher, which gets it to look like an actual Android device at that point. So when I get further into looking at this guy, I'm going to install Nova Launcher and really have a chance to play around with it. I'm going to have this for a couple of months. I'm really hoping to see a lot of advancements with this. I have been enjoying this a lot. This has really enriched the experience with my Galaxy Note 3. I was not enthusiastic about this at all because I've been hearing horrible, terrible things about this, about how it's half-baked and there's no point to it, and it doesn't do anything. Actually, quite the contrary, I think that this is excellent. I've been easily able to check messages on here. I've been able to push Gmail to here. Although right now there are some things that are needing improvement. If I go underneath notifications, you're gonna see go to archive. Normally when you get a text message or if you get an email or if you get a notification from Google Plus, it's going to send it onto here. And then right when it pops up, you can double tap and go and look at whatever it was. If you use the default email client that Samsung wants you to use, you can see pretty much the entire message, although you can't respond. That is one bummer from here is that there is no way to reply. There is no quick replies either. That's something that I really hope some developers are able to get into and change. While you can use Gmail, actual Gmail that Android supports, if you go underneath Gmail, it's going to tell you for details, view this notification on your mobile device. That's a little bit annoying because I don't want to use the Samsung client. 
At least though, no matter what you're using, whether it be Gmail or the Samsung client, if you say view on phone, it's going to open up the message very quickly for you. So even though this is lacking some features at this moment, the really nice thing is it interfaces well with the Galaxy Note 3. For example, if you're going underneath the camera, you can swipe to the right. It's going to bring you into your gallery. Just random picture. If you click menu here, you can say transfer. It's going to immediately transfer it to the phone. So it's very, very painless to transfer information from the watch onto the phone. The same thing goes with the pedometer. So just say that I'm not connected via Bluetooth at all to the phone. I can still use the pedometer. And then when I reconnect this to the phone, I can simply just say send to S Health and it's going to send all my progress to S Health. So no way is this the dumb device that a lot of reviewers have been criticizing. It's actually quite powerful by itself. As of right now, it's only compatible with the Galaxy Note 3. That is going to be its biggest downfall is that Samsung doesn't want you using this device with phones other than the Galaxy line. The Galaxy S4 is going to be getting support with this very soon, but my wish would be for them to allow this to be used by whatever Android device wants to use this. I think that a lot of developers are going to be tinkering with this, especially as they discover that this really is in itself a real Android device that has its own CPU, that has its own RAM, has its own internal storage, has a camera, has a Bluetooth radio, however we can try to manipulate that, has the ability to be used as a headset comes in many different awesome colors. I would have preferred orange because it's one of my favorite colors for some reason is orange. This is really cool. I really like this. And together, I get it. I can see why they wanted to pair this. I think that I've now had a much more enriching experience today with my Galaxy Note 3 than I've been having pretty much this entire week. So I can't wait to go to the pumpkin patch tomorrow and spy on people, take some little video clips to show you all for samples, and I'm going to be getting a lowdown on the battery life, and I'll probably install Nova Launcher really quickly as well so I can get it to look like Androidy goodness. I will keep you updated on this cool thing. I will probably talk about it in my Galaxy Note 3 review a little bit, as well as doing a full review once I fully realize all the capabilities of this thing. So have a good night, everybody. This is the Galaxy Gear. It is kind of stupidly expensive. If they could drop this 50 to to $100, I could see this being really an awesome option.